Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter here, and I'm here with Katie. You'll notice that we're both in the volunteer, you know, colors. Um, I was lucky enough, well, not just me, all of the CPPCon was lucky enough. Katie was a first time volunteer last year at CPPCon. Katie, say hello. Hi. <laughs> so Katie's with us this year twice because she's a volunteer and she's a first time speaker, which is awesome. What's your, what's your talk gonna be about, Katie? Uh, it's called Finding Your Code Bases C++ Roots. It's basically taking a genealogy twist on how we look at our code base in order to figure out how we can write code better and how we can read code better. Hmm. That reminds me of a project that I was working on uh, at the last company I was at. Because when I think of, you know, I was reading the description where you're talking about how you can, you know, how everybody comes in and they touch the code and it kind of changes. And it made me think of this project that I had. There was at one point the person that was coding it before me, you know, XML became the big thing. So we had all these file standards that were like binary file data, but then he had this one configuration file. He wanted to do XML. So there was like three functions for reading and writing XML and then XML was never used again. So, so how do you apply genealogy to code bases? What's that kind of look like in your talk? Yeah. So it's kind of taking the idea that like, when you look at genealogy, you're trying to find the people of the past and understand kind of the story of how how your family got to where they're at now. And so it's taking that and trying to figure out how our code base got to where we're at now. And then since we don't have all that information, how do we read code and figure all that out? But also like, how do we compile our information now? So that way, when you go a couple of years out, a couple of months out, you can actually look back at the code and figure out kind of how we got here using kind of those same techniques. That's, that's cool. And I know that you're down for like Friday. So, you know, as a first time speaker, I'm going to joke with you. That's, you know, that's the blessing and curse, right? Yeah, it's the free day. So like everyone can end up coming. Well, it's, it's that, but it's like, so for me, I, so when I did my talk in Israel this year, I was the first up after Bjarne and I was so happy because I did not stress the rest of the conference about having everything done yeah. on my talk. So so as much as I know you're volunteering this year, I know you'll be working on slides. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get them all ironed out a little bit sooner so that way I can enjoy the conference as well as be ready to give my talk. That's awesome. So volunteering, what was your favorite part about volunteering last year? Because it was your first year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely that I got to talk to a bunch of people who I wouldn't have ended up talking to. Like when you go to the conference, I feel like there's this tendency to go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Yep. And with volunteering, you're kind of forced to interact with different people who you wouldn't expect to interact with. And that kind of gives you a really good platform to talk to people who have different perspectives about C++, about what they're doing, kind of learn from getting to communicate with different people, which is really valuable and helpful. That's that's awesome that you said it that way. And I wanted to ask first before I related, because my first volunteering for CPPCon was 2018. And I just started with a new company. I didn't want to ask them to send me. And so, you know, volunteers, if you want to come volunteer at CPPCon, uh, as a volunteer, we cover your ticket. You still have to take care of your hotel and accommodations. But um, that was the whole thing. Like I'd been to CPPCon three years prior. Um, I met more people in my first year volunteering than I think I met and talked to in my previous three years of attending the conference every year because... Mm -hmm. You just, you do, you know, as a volunteer, you're running around helping people ask you questions because they need to find where things at. And it's just that much easier to become part of the conversation. At least it was for me. <laughs> yeah. So, and you're volunteering, you know, I mean, you volunteered your first year. What else was your first last year? Um, I also gave a lightning talk for the first time last year. Um, so I kind of, I gave a, a five minute lightning talk on, 10 things that a new software engineer wants you to do better. So it's kind of taking that perspective of I graduated a little over a year ago. And so I just kind of started for the first time going completely full time and not just at an internship. So kind of in my onboarding process and getting started, kind of here are the things that are like really basic once you've been there for a while, but are things that are really helpful when you're getting started. Yeah. And so even though we're talking about CPPCon, I have to say like, Katie did so good at CPPCon that we ended up having her volunteer at C++ now, where then you gave a follow-up lightning talk, which was, you know, everybody really loved that one too, where you did the next 10 things, right? Yeah. So I just got to say, like, this is the trifecta. You had two lightning talks starting out. Now you're getting picked for a full talk. Like, this is really exciting for you. It's really cool. I... Thank you. 
So this year at the conference, um, you know, it's our first time back to being on site only. We're going to be a little bit different location because we're downstairs this year. Um, new stuff for the store, lots of book signings. What are you looking forward to for this year besides giving your talk? Definitely getting to go to some different talks and kind of adding another year of experience and kind of getting to see some of the new stuff coming up in C++ as well as kind of solidifying some of those basics that I've gotten to use a little bit and see a different perspective on how you use those things. Right on. Well, we're a little less than three weeks out, so really excited to, to get this thing going. Is there anything you'd recommend for somebody that wanted to be a volunteer? I definitely think just sign up. Um, there, there is some flexibility with like timing and you do get to figure out like if there's a talk you really want to go to, you'll figure out how to end up most of the time end up going to that talk. So there is that ability to still see what you want to see, but it also gives you that ability to get to talk to people who you never expect to talk to um, and get to actually end up talking with potentially some of the speakers and get to really interact with the community and make a ton of friends and end up kind of growing with the community, which is really great. Yeah, I, I will say that is probably my favorite part about doing the, the conferences is just you get to meet everybody and hang around and see everyone. And so you're local to the Denver area, right? Yeah. And so I, I of course already knew that, but I wanted to bring it up because if you are local to the Denver area and we know a lot of the people from the meetup are, are coming already, but volunteers, you know, we have a way to help with parking and everything else. So, you know, if you were thinking of coming on Friday for the free ticket, you know, you can get a ticket for all week long if you come and volunteer with us. So always a good option. Okay. All right. Well, anything else before I let you go and get back to working on slides, which I know you say you're just fine on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think so. Just hopefully we see everyone in Colorado. Looking forward to seeing everybody October 1st to the 6th. If you haven't registered, make sure to get registered. And we will see you all at the conference. Look forward to seeing you there, Katie. Thank you. Look forward. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye.